It was described by one observer at the time as the most significant event to our country since the Declaration of Independence. It involved a largely uninhabited land of tall grass prairie and mountains, but in one fell swoop it doubled the size of the United States, catapulting the fledgling nation into a world power. It was the Louisiana Purchase. In January of 1803, wishing to secure safe and open navigation from the Ohio and Mississippi rivers to the Atlantic Ocean, President Jefferson sent James Monroe to join Robert Livingston in Paris with orders to negotiate for the purchase of New Orleans. The year before, the Spanish official in charge of the Port of New Orleans had stopped the right of deposit, preventing American farmers from warehousing their produce and goods in New Orleans for transshipment to the Atlantic. President Jefferson declared, It is New Orleans through which the produce of three-eighths of our territory must pass to market. France, placing herself on that door, assumes to us an attitude of defiance. Ceded in 1762 to Spain, French Louisiana was returned to France in 1800 by the Treaty of Ile de France. Napoleon Bonaparte had planned the French Empire in the New World with its center at New Orleans. But by 1803, his plans had been shattered. A large army he sent to the Caribbean island of Santo Domingo was destroyed by revolt and yellow fever. Threatened with a new war in Europe, Napoleon suddenly offered the entire territory of Louisiana for sale. I renounce Louisiana. It is not only New Orleans that I will cede, it is the whole colony without reservation. The Louisiana Territory was a huge chunk of land, ranging from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains to the border of modern-day Canada, in total 828,000 square miles. When Jefferson got word of the sale offer, he had to act quickly. But the country had no precedent for dealing with such matters, and strict interpretation of the federal constitution did not cover it. After much agonizing, he made the deal. The Louisiana Purchase in May of 1803 was bought for $15 million. In an instant, the United States doubled in size. In the same instant, the United States became a world power. The West was now open. The lands of Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, and the Dakotas were immediately available for expansion and settlement. Soon to follow would be the riches of the Rocky Mountains and the U.S. was poised to take control of the northern part of the Spanish Empire and extend its claim all the way to the Pacific Ocean. Just as important as the acquisition of new land was the Louisiana Purchase's impact on the new federal government. By using his powers of office in purchasing the land, Jefferson extended the executive powers of the presidency. His actions initiated the idea of implied powers in the Constitution. Ironically, though Jefferson was a strict constructionalist, he used implied powers in order to justify his action in purchasing the new lands. On Independence Day in 1803, he announced the purchase of the Louisiana Territory to the nation. Without the purchase of the Louisiana Territory, it is possible that the United States would have remained a small country east of the Mississippi, bounded by the Spanish Empire West and South.